But look what he says in verse 8, the second half. You have a little strength, verse 8, but you've kept my word. Jesus says treasuring his word is vital. They were weak, little strength. Their size was small, their resources were little, but they were going through the doors for him. They kept his word. Literally, that means guard is a treasure. Jesus is watching what we're doing with his word. And look at verse 10. This is a famous verse here. Uh, Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. That is what the Bible defines as the tribulation. You say, how do you know that? Because it's called the hour of trial. He said, Jesus said it's going to test the whole earth. And look at the ending of verse 10. To test those who are, and the word is earth dwellers. All the way through the tribulation, this word is used for the lost people. They're called earth dwellers. So, so there are three reasons that we understand from verse 10. He's talking about the tribulation. And Jesus said to them, I'm going to keep you from the hour of trial. I'm going to keep you from what you're going through right there in Asia Minor. But I am going to keep you also, the church, through the one that's going to test the whole world. And so when we get to chapter 6, I'm going to talk to you about the tribulation and the rapture and why we believe that we don't go through the tribulation. But what Jesus is telling them is they should persevere in hope and believe that as they go through the open door, he can keep them. So what's a healthy Christian? Jesus offers this to all believers. Basically, it's a life that's abundant. Remember John 10, I've come to give you abundant life, confident. Uh, The righteous are as bold as a lion. Joyful, we have rivers of life-giving water. Guilt-free, remember I already showed you peaceful. This last verse said we're filled with hope. John 7 says we're overflowing, and we know why he made us. It's just a life of faithfulness. Now guess what's coming? Verse 10 tells us that. There's a global war on Christians that we already know from Revelation is going to get harder and darker until the time when in the tribulation every believer is killed if they won't deny Christ. That's the martyrs we see in chapter 7. So there's coming this global war. Now it's starting, I mean, when I used to go into the communist countries, when I went into the Muslim countries, there was struggle, but it wasn't universal. There were always pockets. How do we get ready for the darkness and the war on Christianity that you can just start seeing? You can see it in public opinion, and you can see it just on the horizon. What does the Lord say we're supposed to do? Make a fortress, hide, go underground? No. What Revelation says is we're supposed to be healthy. So what are the vital signs of healthy believers? Number one, John 14, 21. And this, this is the answer to how we live the Christian life. We live the Christian life prompted by love. Here's how Jesus put it. He who has my commandments and keeps them and keeps them is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. I will love him and manifest myself to him. We want to be holy. We want to be strong in the word. We want to read and study and share the gospel. Not because we have to. Not because everybody else is, but prompted by love. See, this is what Ephesus was missing. They were doing all the right things, but for the wrong reasons. They were excelling, but without love. Jesus said, if you're healthy, you've got to, at the the very core of your being, base it on love. Secondly, we have to be trained by grace to say no to sin. And that's the only way. You can't try harder. You can't get a new program. The only thing that keeps us denying ungodliness and worldly lust is grace. And we just have to say, I need, remember what Hebrews 4 says, that we might find grace to help in time of need. How do you get it? You ask for it. And the Lord always offers it. Thirdly, the third sign of health, this constant renewal by consecration. Now, all of you know I mean, this is all the imperatives that don't yield yourself in Romans 6. But you all know Romans 12. That's a very familiar passage to young people. 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you what? Present. Remember I told you the story of the group that came to our church and gave everybody chalk? What they were supposed to do is draw a circle, step in it, present themselves to the Lord. But the, the emphasis was not just in the parking lot, that every day, now I mean this morning, uh, I woke up, my alarm was set for 5, but I woke up at 4.30. I usually wake up for the alarm. So I, I woke up, and, and we're staying in some housing provided by uh, people in our ministry, and so um, in this strange foreign place to us, I, I moved to the edge of the bed, and my feet were hanging off the edge, and as I, for a moment, sat there, I looked up, and I said, Lord... Here I go, and I slid off the bed, stood right there, and I just, in that spot, I said, Lord, you know, I was hoping I wouldn't wake Bonnie up because it's 4.30 in the morning. I said, Lord, I'm presenting myself again to you. How long did that take? Oh, 10 seconds. What was I doing? I'm renewing my consecration. Do you regularly, not just when you tie something on a, you know, a cross or throw something in a fire, do you renew your surrender to the Lord?